Very good evening and welcome to our evening prayer on this Monday, the 27th of December 2021. It's the third day of Christmas, would you believe? And today we are celebrating the feast day of St. John, Apostle and Evangelist. Whether or not John the Apostle and John the Evangelist are one and the same, the Church honours on this day the one who proclaims Jesus as the Word made flesh and the one who is the disciple whom Jesus loved. The Gospel narratives speak of John as one of the sons of Zebedee who followed Jesus. He was present at the transfiguration of Jesus on the holy mountain. He was there with Jesus at the Last Supper. He was there with Jesus in his agony in the garden. He was, was there with Jesus and his mother standing at the foot of the cross. He was there with Jesus as the witness of his resurrection and what he saw and believed. According to tradition, John died in Ephesus in advanced old age. And so uh, it's mildly informal evening prayer today. We come to our prayers of preparation. O God, make speed to save us, O Lord, make haste to help us. You laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. Blessed are you, sovereign God, our light and our salvation, to you be praise and glory for ever. To dispel the darkness of our night, you sent forth your Son, the firstborn of all creation, to be the Christ, the light of the world. Rejoicing in the mystery of the Word made flesh, we acclaim him Emmanuel, as all creation sings to you, Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. And the office hymn of the Father's heart begotten. Of the Father's heart begotten, ere the world from chaos rose, he is Alpha from that fountain. All that is and has been flows, he is Omega of all things, yet to come the mystic close, evermore and evermore. Oh, how blessed that wondrous birthday, when the maid the curse retrieved, brought to birth mankind's salvation, by the Holy Ghost conceived, and her babe the world's redeemer, in her loving arms received evermore and evermore. Sing ye heights of heaven his praises, angels and archangels sing, wheresoe'er he be, Ye faithful, let your joyous anthems ring, every tongue his name confessing, countless voices answering, evermore and evermore. that this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. And our psalm, Psalm 97. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice, let the multitudes of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings lit up the world. The earth saw it and trembled. The mountains melted like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declared his righteousness and all the peoples have seen his glory. 
Confounded be all those who worship carved images and delight in mere idols. Bow down before him, all you gods. Zion heard and was glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoiced because of your judgments, O Lord. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of his faithful. He delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joy for the true of heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And the Old Testament reading from the prophecy of Isaiah, chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance upon him, each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And they called to one another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots of the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken out of the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Here ends the first reading. And the Song of Redemption. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. The Father has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. In him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile all things. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. And our second reading from, of course, the first letter of St. John, chapter 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood, and the Spirit is the one who testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. There are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater, for this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. 
Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. Here is the second reading. And our response to read. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. And the Magnificat. When peaceful silence lay over all, and night was in the midst of her swift course, from your royal throne, O God, down from the heavens leapt your almighty word. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. When peaceful silence lay over all and night was in the midst of her swift course, from your royal throne, O God, down from the heavens leapt your almighty word. And so we come now to our prayers of intercession. And so we pray today in the Anglican cycle of prayer for the Diocese of Northern Indiana in the Episcopal Church of the United States, Province 5. We pray for the Denby Mission area in these days, praying for the community of St. Michael Kyrwis, for John Harris, Neris Hughes and Roland Ward, the Wardens, for Rebecca Sperry Taylor, the mission area leader and their priest, praying for wisdom as they seek to decide where, whether they should move mission areas in that particular part of the world. We continue to pray as always for Gregory, our bishop, giving thanks for his ministry amongst us. We also pray for Andy, the Archdeacon of St. Asaph, and we continue to pray for Bishop John Lomas as he begins his ministry in Swansea and Brecon and finishes his time as Archdeacon of Wrexham. We pray for those who are in particular need of our prayers at this time. We continue to pray for all those who are developing, producing and rolling out uh, the vaccine and booster programmes. We continue to pray for all those in nursing and residential homes, for Daniel and all who spent Christmas in prison. We pray for their families in particular. We pray too for those who minister to them, for Jane, the lead chaplain at the Milo Hospital, and for Alan at HMP Berwyn. We pray for those who have asked us to pray for them, for those who are sick amongst them, Louise, Derek, Gordon, Harry, Dot, Peter, Joshua, Bob, Alison, Maldwin, Roy, Mark, Carol, Barbara, Bob, Alan and Paul. And we also remember the faithful departed, remembering especially Anne and Ruth. And we're remembering our own departed loved ones, particularly in this Christmas season. And our form of prayer. To us a child is born, to us a son is given. Let us pray for the people he came to save. Wonderful Counselor, you order all things with your wisdom. Help the Church to reveal the mystery of your love and fill her with the Spirit of Truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, the government is on your shoulders. Guide the leaders of the nations and bring in your kingdom of justice and righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Everlasting Father, you call us to live together in unity. Protect by your mercy all your children. Bless our families and renew our communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prince of Peace, you bring reconciliation through the cross. By your healing power, give to all who suffer your gift of wholeness and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us commend the world to which Christ came to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Lord, cast your bright beams of light upon the Church, that being enlightened by the teaching of your blessed Apostle and Evangelist St John, we, we may so walk in the light of your truth, that we may at last attain to the light of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your incarnate Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May God, who has called us out of darkness into his marvellous light, bless us and fill us with peace. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much for joining me this evening on this uh, Feast of St John the Evangelist, as I said, the uh, third day of Christmas. Um, yes, um, only another nine to go. Thank you very much. <laughs>